All right, let's jump right in. We're doing inventory today, uh, why we need an inventory, how much money it saves us or makes us, and we're going to open every single one of these boxes, and you're going to see exactly what I bring for my inventory every single day. Uh, now, these don't stay in the van just like this. This is a picture I took on a day I was cleaning out the van. So, what I have is these, uh, forget who makes them, Husky, Husky boxes. Uh, each one of them is for a different purpose. And the idea behind these is that when I get out of the van, let's say I've got a pop-up uh, bathroom drain, like in a bathroom vanity sink, I've got a pop-up drain that something is not working on it. I don't need to know what. I can just grab my bathroom drain pop-up kit and go inside. And it's typically, the idea is it's gonna have all the tools I need in it. It's gonna have all the parts I need in it. I shouldn't need to bring anything other than my kit. So this is all of my kits here. And I'm gonna go to the first one. This is my miscellaneous uh, fastener kit. And as you can see, it's mostly stuff I've just thrown in there. It's almost like when you've got a bucket and you just throw all your spare stuff in there. The only difference is the buckets tip over. So I have a kit with a lid. Uh, this is my ceiling fan kit. Now, these pictures were taken months and months ago. I've just never gotten around to doing the video, so there's a lot more in here now. But what you need for your ceiling fan kit is obviously you need your light chain, uh, your pull chain switches, and some spare chains and whatnot. You're also going to need, I keep, I now have a bin full of screws that I took out of old ceiling fans, so I just have kind of a Nice assortment of every single different size that you can have. I've also got some balancing kits because sometimes I'm just balancing a ceiling fan. And then bulbs are separate. Bulbs are in a, a bulb box. Next, this is my, uh, essentially this is my door slash hinge kit. So this is, at the moment, it's for both uh, just interior doors and cabinet doors. Now I'm going to be splitting this up soon and I'm going to have one kit for cabinet doors and one kit for interior doors. But what we, what I throw in here is essentially any and all of my hinges. Now you see I've also got these, uh, now these chisels are in my bag now, but I still have one in the kit. These are for chiseling away at the door frame when you need to move a strike plate and whatnot. Uh, I also have my door stops in this kit at the moment and I'm going to have a completely separate door stop kit because I do so many of them and there's so many different styles and colors and sizes that I'm also going to make a door stop kit. This is my drain kit and at the moment uh, this being an older picture what I've changed since then is this kit is now only for bathroom drains and I have another kit that's for tub and shower drains. You can see what's in here. Um, it's just all the parts and pieces that you need, especially this guy. I don't need these very often, but these are for the tub overflows that have the little lever that you pop up and down. That's what actually goes down inside there. This is my screen kit. Uh, it's much more full now than it is because, again, since I've made these kits and taken these pictures, I've added to my inventory quite a lot. But basically, this is the spline that you'll need. Uh, this is also, each of these bins now has a different color, like a dark brown and a tan and a white and a, a silver slash aluminum for the corner pieces and stuff. Comes in very handy. My masonry kit, believe it or not, there ain't much more in there than this right now because this is literally just about all the masonry tools you're ever going to need. I, I did throw a cold chisel and a hammer in there. This is my masonry kit for uh, attaching things to masonry. All of my different nuts and bolts and whatnot that are designed to be attachment hardware for masonry. I also have all of my hammer drill bits in here. And again, I grabbed that, like say I got a gate on the side of a, a masonry structure, a gate going to the backyard, it's attached to the masonry. I just pull this out and it's typically gonna have everything I need in it. This is literally just for Allen wrenches. It's much more full at the moment because I had a nice little collection in the shop that I finally went through and threw in there. But man, it sucks when you don't have the one-sized Allen wrench you need. So it's just a whole kit just for Allen wrenches. 
Now this is my medium patch and paint kit. So these are bags of hot mud. I have them in Ziploc bags these days, but these are my bags of hot mud, sandpaper, pieces of half inch sheetrock of moderate size. These should be inch and five eighths. Uh, these screws, the drywall screw should be inch and five eighths. These are my backer boards that I put behind the hole. It's always half inch MDF because that stuff will grab that screw and when you're driving it in, it'll grab it hard enough to countersink that screw into the sheetrock instead of pulling through the back. Obviously, this is just a kitchen sink drain kit. I highly recommend these kits here with this, uh, I forget the name of them, Snappy Trap. Actually, yeah, Snappy Trap. Uh, I find the snappy trap kits work real nice and I usually have a brand new snappy trap bag uh, in the van in a different bin that's just like a spare parts bin. I usually have a new bag but this these days is much more full and it's full of the like as you can see I kind of have some duplicates in here. I've gone through it since then and I've sort of weeded out the junk so that the kit kind of always contains everything that I'll need in terms of sink drain parts and pieces. Uh, nails. This is my electrical kit. It has quite a bit more in it now, but it's essentially, it has the tools like uh, the, the wire strippers and stuff. And this is just for changing outlets or anything else of that sort. This is a fairly self-explanatory kit. It's literally just a switch plate kit and I'm probably about to make a second one because this one is now completely full. And I mean, you know, so look at it this way, you need, look at this plate right here. So this is of the particular style where it's a large rectangle rather than the smaller two holes for an outlet or rather than the teeny tiny little flip up and down toggle. So you have these sometimes where there's four holes in a row, like four of them side by side, three in a row, two in a row, and a single. You have these rectangular holes, you also have the ones with the round holes. You have beige, you have white, you have a much darker beige. There's so many combinations, you can't fit them all in one kit, so I'm about to split that kit up and add more to it. Shut off valve kit, this thing is absolutely full now. I just keep throwing. Every time I need a shut off valve, I just buy one or two extras, especially one or two extras of a type if I see it on the shelf and I go, oh, I don't think I have that. Then I just buy it, because they're what, like, five to eight bucks each usually, maybe 12 at the most, depending on the style. So I try to keep this full because I do a lot of shut off valves. This is my uh, vertical blind. Actually, this, is, uh, this kit is for sliding glass doors. So it has the parts that the sliding glass door needs and the parts that the screen for the sliding glass door needs. Now, what I have done since then is, uh, for example, this piece here, this is the locking mechanism. I've now got a new kit that has handles for sliding glass doors and sliding screen doors. So it's got the handles and it's got the locking mechanisms. My half inch copper kit, I use the shit out of this one. I've got everything I need in here, just all of it. <clears throat> um, I don't see the flux because some of the solder is, does have flux in it, but I also carry flux around now. I, li I like to flux the shit out of all of it. Here's my random screw box. This has definitely grown. I now have a random screw box just for drywall screws, and then I've got another random screw box that's got especially, these are my, uh, oh my goodness, what do you call them? I can't remember the name of the screw. It's my favorite screw. I say it all the time, but sometimes I just brain fart on the name. But I really love these. So I've got a bin for drywall screws, and I've got a bin that's mostly for these, but also for a few other types. And I'll be splitting those up more and more as I acquire. I try to buy things in at least semi-large cases. So I'll be splitting this up to where I probably have like five of them with all the different types of screws. Here we have, oh, this is kind of a random kit that I threw together. Uh, this knob shouldn't even be in here, but it's sort of a miscellaneous like plumbing slash kitchen kit. Uh, I haven't done much with it. These, these are actually very handy. These are caps 
that go on a kitchen sink. They fit the standardized hole on a kitchen sink because what happens is I have a lot of houses where there's a faucet and then over to the side there's a sprayer. And the faucets that I put in, the sprayer is a pullout. I put in the exact same faucet. You'll see it later on in this, but I put in the exact same faucet every time. Well, now I've got a hole from that old sprayer and these guys right here are what fill in those holes. Uh, these clamps right here are generally speaking, for the most part, therefore, the drain plumbing where the garbage disposal empties into it. And that's about it for that one. Uh, <clears throat> this one is for showers in general. Now, I don't need to have... These are the wheels that go on top of a glass shower door. I don't need to have them in this kit, but they're not really justified going into a bigger kit, so that's where they're at for now. <clears throat> but you're going to find that all of these handles, all the different brands, they come with different valve stems with different teeth configurations. So I just kind of keep this thing full, and I've also got more spares of these just kind of laying in bins. This is my uh, cutoff tool kit. It's just a bits and bl or blades, essentially, just blades, blades, blades for both my power tools. There's a little grinding wheel. There's razor blades. There's oscillating tool blades. This one I love. If y'all haven't seen the videos where I talk about this, these guys right here, these toggle bolts, this is what you use for toilet paper holders and towel racks in the bathroom where it's pulling the sheetrock out of the wall because those holes just keep widening up over and over. So obviously, if you know how a toggle bolt works, uh, you can pinch it shut, push it in, and then it flips back open like this and pulls up against the sheetrock. And here's my hose bib kit. It's got mostly everything I need, and it also has more in it these days than it used to. Because if you think about it again, you can have hose bibs that connect to uh, PVC, that connect to copper, or that connect to threaded pipe. They can be male threaded or they can be female threaded. They have different angles, they have different styles as far as the part that you actually turn. So this one's getting much more full and again I just buy a few extras whenever I'm buying stuff. Oh and then let me go back. This is extremely helpful. <clears throat> this is basically just all the packings that you would need for just about any piece of plumbing. And they just sell them as little kits at Ace Hardware or Home Depot. And this one is my uh, small patch and paint kit. So as you can see, there's no pieces of drywall in here and there's no backer boards for the drywall. This is just for like quarter sized dents and stuff like that, that, that you can't fill with caulk or some other product. And I use hot mud again because it dries very quickly and I can get the paint over it more quickly. And this is kind of my random bits box. I use the shit out of it. It's extremely handy. And I, I've been doing this a long time, so, you know, like these drill bits here, these are just all leftovers from old full kits. And whenever my kit starts getting to where it's missing three or four common sizes, I just empty it out into here and I get another kit. And here, ah, uh, yes, my valve stems. Yes, I do not have a good valve stem inventory yet. I wish I did. This is all I had at the time, and I have different ones now, but it's not many more than this. I really do need to go buy a good set of them. Uh, the problem is I just don't do a lot of valve stems now because I taught my son how to do them, so whenever I have a valve stem job, I send it to him because that opens up more of my schedule for more complex jobs. But these tools right here for the valve stems are extremely useful. You need to buy them. And then I just, I, like I said, I have the kit. But it doesn't look much different than this these days because I'm not doing many of them. But you should fill yours up. Yeah, here's my toilet kit. And you can pretty much see what's in there. It's flappers. I don't know if you know about this stuff right here, but this is a little powder that you dump into the tank before you take the toilet off of its mount so that as you carry the toilet out of the house... So you dump this in, and I think it's the material that goes in baby's diapers, honestly. It sure does seem like it. But you dump this into the tank and into the bowl, and it will soak up all the water and turn it into like a giant blob of jelly so that you're not swishing water around all over the floor when you're carrying the toilet out. Which I don't carry the toilet out. I actually take the new toilet out of the box, put the old toilet in the box, and then push that out. But nonetheless, 
this powder here helps keep things much cleaner while you're working. Same picture of the same thing. Sliding closet door kit, I use this shit out of. I keep a lot of the old ones, as you can see, because if I'm, so if I'm putting up a new one, let, let's say I have a sliding closet door and I need to replace the head rail. Well, the head rail comes with new rollers and whenever I do that, I always put the new rollers on. But if the old rollers are good, I keep them because sometimes I just need one roller uh, for just one shitty roller, you know what I mean? There's the floor guides. This kit is much more filled up these days, but it's all the same stuff, just more of it. There's the backpack. We went over that lately. I mean, there's not much for me to say about this. There's a whole video on my backpack. It looks different today than it looks in there. Uh, I did the video just like a week or two ago, so if you want to see what my current setup is for the backpack, you can go to that video. There's more stuff in the backpack, more stuff in the backpack, more stuff in the backpack. Yep, here's my little broken bin. I just, I keep, it's the same bin that I still have, even though these pictures are months and months old. Uh, it's just all of, sort of all my chemicals, just anything that's a chemical that I want to have quick access to instead of putting it into uh, kits that are laying on their side. These are all standing up. And here's a random bin that I have. I'd like to say it has some sort of, uh, like, method to it, but it doesn't. I have still, just like everybody, a few bins that I just throw stuff into. This is the faucet that I put on at all of my houses. It's between 90 and and $100 usually. It's gone over that before. It's been under that before, but this faucet, the Market Pullout Kitchen Faucet by Glacier Bay, super fast install. Supply hoses are already attached to it, so you just have to attach them down at the other end. It's pretty. It does come with a base that goes under it, which I almost always put on uh, because there used to be a base and the sink's all dirty and I just put it right back the way it was. Now this box here is important. It's taller than it. Oh look, actually this is a box left over from when I bought my kits. So this box here is full of bulbs and bulbs is another one of those inventory wise that will save you so much time because you have flood bulbs, you have regular incandescent, whether they're incandescent or some other type, but that general shape of your traditional incandescent bulbs plus the flood bulbs. You've got the GU base bulbs, which are the ones that have the two prongs that come out that you have to stick them in and turn them, which I absolutely hate those. Uh, you've got two sizes of threaded bulb, just like a standard bulb, but where the threads are smaller, there's two different sizes of those. You've got your compact fluorescence, you've got so many types, and of each of those types, you've got LED versions or incandescent versions of them. You've got the soft white, you've got the daylight, you've got the sunlight. It's really hard to match all of them. Oh, and then you've got vanity bulbs, those are different. You've got flame bulbs, you've got Edison bulbs. So the bigger box and the more boxes and the more you can fill that up, because nothing will chap you more like just going to a move out and you knock everything out real quick because you had a great inventory, but then there's one bulb, one style that you don't have, and you've got to make that trip cost you an hour, which means it costs you a hundred bucks. Make that trip just to go buy one bulb. And while we're at it, let's, let's talk for just a second about why we want an inventory, because I got a lot of pushback on this on one of my first videos where I said that I was going to develop an inventory and that that was sort of my next big exciting idea because what I had noticed was I was going to Home Depot or Ace Hardware for every single job I did. And that's generally going to take about an hour out of your day. You're going to drive 15 to 20 minutes to get there unless you're lucky and it's real close. So you're going to drive 15 or 20 minutes to get there and you're going to spend at least 15 or 20 minutes in the store. So you got 20 minute drive there, 20 minutes in the store, 20 minute drive back, that's an hour. And if you're trying to knock out four or five jobs a day, which is at the time back then was what I was trying to do and getting excited about, that's hard to do when half your day is spent just driving to Home Depot and back. So what I did was uh, I just realized, man, I'm wasting, if I could have those four hours back, then that's four more jobs I could do or three more jobs I could do at least. And I decided I needed to have an inventory and I didn't have the money, but I just kept collecting up stuff piece by piece. 
And now it works, man. Now I show up at jobs, constantly show up at a job where I used to would have had to go to Home Depot. Now instead I finish the job on site without ever leaving because I have the parts and the tools with me all the time. Now some of the comments I got on that were basically people saying that they had tried that and that it didn't work out and it's a dumb idea because they're just going to rattle around in the back of the truck or the back of the van and they're all going to get destroyed and dirty and you're not going to be able to use them. Well, to me, that's not a reason not to do it. That's just a problem that needs a solution. So problem, they get dirty and damaged over time in the back of your van. Solution, find a way to store them in such a way that they don't get dirty or damaged and fucked up in the back of your van. So I bought those bins. Now, do I lose some parts sometimes? Yeah, but think about it. Let's take my, my kit that just has like the switch plates and the outlet covers. Nothing else in it, just that. It's probably got $100 worth of materials in it, right? Every time I go to a job where I'm going to have to go to Home Depot just to buy that one thing and I show up to the job and maybe it's a three-item job, one of those items is a switch plate, and I end up having to make that drive to Home Depot, well, I lost 100 bucks. So if that kit saves me one drive to Home Depot one time, it has fully paid for itself. Instead... It saved me in the last three to four months. It's probably saved me a dozen trips to Home Depot. So that kit that I spent a hundred bucks on has given me $1,200 in value. And if you want to value the time differently or say that it doesn't take quite that long, that's fine. You know, instead of $1,200 in value, call it $600 in value. The point is, um, the more you have with you that you can find and that isn't damaged or lost or broken, the more of that you can do, the better, because now what I can do, if you go look back at my videos, when I was first talking about an inventory, that's back when I was thinking $600 a day was possible. Now I'm at a point where now my son gets all the easy work because he's still learning. He's getting harder stuff as time goes by as he's picking up skills. But he gets a lot of those easier jobs. But man, when I want to do, if I want a $1,000 a day, I can do a $1,000 a day because of my inventory. And I I'm not saying I can't do a $1,000 a day without it, but it's highly unlikely. I'll end up hitting $750 or $850, and I'll just be mad on the drive home because I wanted to hit 1000 but I ran out of time because I had too many trips to Home Depot. But that's the value of doing this, is you have to understand what your time's worth, and you have to understand that if you're driving to Home Depot two or three or four times a day, you need an inventory. Another one of my random kits, this is my painting kit specifically. Uh, it's not in the same bin anymore. That bin's gotten fucking destroyed. But this is my painting kit here. You know what to put in the painting kit. This I still use. This is my bucket um, that I have. So right now I have a new kit that's for all my sliding glass door handles. But this bucket still carries all my old sliding glass door handles. Because quite frequently I can just go into this bucket and I can pull out an old one and take it apart and pull out the one piece I need and not have to break into my new kit. Another random kit here, just random as you can see, all kinds of shit going on in there. And we're getting into tools now, that is a different video. So yeah guys, that's my kit. I hope I've done a decent job explaining to you why you need them. Uh, you gotta look at the work that you're doing in your area, you're gonna need different stuff than I do you know, in, in many different ways. Like you may have a lot of pocket doors, so you'll want a whole pocket door kit. But this is my, essentially all of the parts and materials that I carry around in my van. So for anybody who stuck through all the way to the end, I know you must be starting a handyman business because this is very dry material, but hopefully I got you the information that you need. Uh, yes, I do carry more than this quite frequently. This just happens to be what was in the van the day that I was cleaning the van out so that I could, uh, well, just clean the van out. But while I was at it, I figured I might as well take these kits and open them up one at a time. Part of the cleaning out process is getting stuff put back in the kits that's gotten taken out and tossed around. And that, there you go, guys. That's the inventory that you need. Sorry if it was too boring, but a lot of people have been asking for it, and I promised I would get it out. And there's just no interesting way to show somebody an inventory. So y'all have a great day.